Harbaugh now heads to the Los Angeles Chargers. He wins everywhere. He wins, period. Justin Herbert, he's a crown jewel. Well, you guys better enjoy this. Quick snap, Herbert to throw. Has a man, touchdown. The fans loved it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Oh my God. We're going to be known as world champions. And we're going to do it or die trying. Don't let the powder blues fool you. Who's got it better than that? Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldogs, and with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Indubitably. Indubitably, sir. And let's not forget Kyle the Coach Duggan. It's good to be back, boys. It does feel after just one week, I'm rusty. Like, I'm kind of nervous for what, yeah. like, what do I say? How does this creaky. work? That's, I don't know. That's what happens what when you take a week off. You're just like, yeah. wait. Like, what the weeks happens, that we've, like, though? taken off for, like, a full episode, coming back is like, all right, what do I press? Are we recording? Is this live? Yeah. 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 Is somebody calling in? But no, folks, so we're all good. back. Kyle's back. Yeah give, yeah. give me some grace here if I if I hiccup a couple times in the nah. episode because I feel like it's coming. It's no going to be fine, buddy. No grace. All uh, harsh looks Shame. and mean Shame. thoughts. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Well, we've got plenty to talk about. We've got a Craig experience and an Ask Bold Fam lined up. So let's waste no time. Start at the top. Uh, when you're, when this episode comes out yet again, something happens <laughs> after we record our episodes, As but it is tradition. It is tradition. Uh, the voluntary, uh, off season workout program will be kicking off today. As you are listening to this, uh, that's going to be exciting. That's what Harbaugh has been talking about this whole off April season. 2nd, April, 2nd, April, April 2nd, April 2nd. Is it April 2nd yet? Is it April 2nd yet? What? He opens his windows. Boy, what day is it? <laughs> April 2nd, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I have a question. What is a coach without players? Yeah. They're not a, they're not a coach. No, they're, they're just, just sitting there band <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> yeah. But tomorrow he's officially our coach and he's yes. coaching players. And I couldn't be more excited for this. Voluntarily, too. This I hope there's to be a I hope there's on the coverage. Yeah. Man, I just uh, hope there's coverage. I just want I want be. all kinds of documentaries for day one. Wait, there is this be. at the it's at Hogue still? Oh, it's, it's gonna still be at Hogue, Hogue. yeah. Yeah. Bummer. They're still working on the uh on the facility, but that should be coming up here pretty soon. Um, yeah, so head coach Jim Harbaugh now in place. Bolts can start earlier than other teams because they have a new head coach. Mm. <laughs> Wait, do the Raiders technically count as having a new head coach because the interim promotion? Mm-mm. I don't know. I think it's only three teams. I think I saw the Chargers, Commanders, and I think it's one other team that's okay. doing it early. So, yeah, um, look at us. Yeah, look at us. We get, we get a little head start. Um, yeah, the bolts will hold a voluntary mini camp from April 22nd to the 24th. That'll be the next thing. So right now they're just working out. They're just practicing, you know, getting to meet ben the coach, it's, getting it's Ben Herbert time, baby. Yeah. Let's do some little mingling yeah. and then mini camp coming in April 22nd to the 24th, right before draft. Perfect timing. And then voluntarily organized team activity OTAs for those that are in the know. Uh, practices will be held May 20th, 21st, May 23rd, May 29th through the 31st and June 4th through the 7th. And then the Bolts will conclude their off-season program with a mandatory mini camp June 11th through the 13th. And training camp information will be released at a later date. So everybody that wants to go and watch and get stuff signed and throw balls to Justin Herbert or whoever wants to catch those balls coming out at a later date. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. It's to just see. exciting to have these dates be so close. It's yeah. so close. Well, it's been Football's- such a lull, man. Yeah. Like we got we got our coach. That was great. We've signed some players. That was great. And now it's just been a little too quiet. It's too long. Dude, we need something th- to happen. We're three weeks away from the draft. Like I I, I, I just keep repeating that to myself. Like, we're coming. It's coming. It's, it's happening. It's gonna happen. <laughs> we're gonna have all these speculations are gonna be put to an end here soon. And I we, we, we need it sooner. I can't wait later. for that. Yeah, because then we can start talking about the players, which yeah, is more yeah. important than speculation of the players. Sure. Um, well, this little tidbit came out on Twitter from the 33rd team. Uh, Marvin Harrison Sr.'s first touchdown in the NFL was thrown by Marvin Harrison Jr.'s potential future head coach in Jim Harbaugh. There's a connection. There's, there is always a connection. <laughs> that's a little too perfect. That's a little be, too. Though? 
Yeah, that that's that's a nice conversation when you, you we, know, make the call. <laughs> we don't deserve nice things. This is too perfect. This isn't happening. <laughs> yeah. But okay, it would a, be amazing was, if it did. On a scale from one to ten, like, are you are you that excited for Marvin Harrison Jr.? Like, would you give? Would is that a ten? If he's there, it's a ten. Oh my god, we have to draft him. Mm-hmm. For me, it's pretty freaking exciting. Yeah, ten. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think it's like a nine point like two. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay. Can't go full. I can't go full hog can't on go that. Full ten. Nine point two. That's Justin's job to go full ten. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't never go full ten. <laughs> but uh, that would be that would be crazy to see Jim Harbaugh coaching Marvin Harrison Jr., the son of the guy who he threw his first touchdown <laughs> the to. Son of the guy playing the, a guy dressed as another guy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Uh, and then Eddie Graciano said, imagine this matchup at uh, Chargers practice every day, but the juniors, and it's a shot of Marvin Harrison against Asante Samuel. The seniors. Yeah. You get That's both boys so playing weird. on the same team. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Like that. You don't like it? Old, huh, boys? Doesn't that make you feel uh, a little old? Oh, I feel hella old for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I'm older than both Harrison and Samuel. So that's a good, I guess. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm older than the seniors. But it was cool because um Asante Samuel Sr. liked that post and was like, yeah, that'd be freaking rad. Like it's just that cool to rad. see the dads interacting. Yeah. And that's I don't know. That's a really cool idea. It is awesome. It would be it would just be a nice match to see that happen. And I mean, the guy's a hell of a player. It's not just like, boy, that would be cool. Yeah. It'd be like, boy, that would be cool. And he's a really good football player. So mm-hmm. let's uh yeah. let's get all of that. And then uh, Charlie Sinclair pointed out a tweet. He's from our Marvin sleuther, Harrison dude. Jr. Yeah, he's he, digging he, he deep. He really gets in there with these kind of nuggets. Yeah, he found a tweet from Marvin Harrison Jr. back in 2019 uh, saying, excited to say I've received an offer from the University of Michigan. Go blue. <laughs> so <laughs> That's an Mr. alternate universe right there. Yeah, was being yeah, recruited. Yeah, Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been yeah, wild. But that means he Harbaugh could've... liked him. Harbaugh liked him from the get go, and then had to deal with him for four years in right yeah. in college too. So yeah. I, I don't know. Like if anybody knows the game record that Marvin Harrison Jr. is, Coach Harbaugh knows. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So if he's there and you don't draft him, there's I'm I'm going to be confident in whatever the plan is. Right. But if he does draft him, you go, oh, he just loved this guy. This was yeah. the plan the whole the whole time. I just and I just read an article too. Like, there's people saying that you know Harbaugh may be going too far with you know playing 3D chess and getting you know his guy JJ McCarthy drafted so he can get the five pick of whoever he wants. Like people, <laughs> that's the kind of shit that people are talking about right now. And I find it absolutely hilarious that it, you know coach is living rent free in all these people's heads. Like he's like talk people up the draft board. I mean, the guy, the, the kind of has, he won the national championship. I mean, I'd, it's hard to say that that's not in one of those did, top quarterbacks. That'd be did honestly kind of strange. Jim McCarthy, did anyone have him top five, three weeks ago? No, he was no, not of course a top not. five pick three weeks ago. All of a no. sudden, Harbaugh gets on the mic. Somebody's moving yeah. up. He showed up to the pro We're day and it. got real, you know, hype man style and really yeah. got it, got it flowing. <laughs> Got them juices flowing. Got it flowing, baby. Um, let's see. Sleeper NFL saying the Chargers GM Joe Hortiz believes wide receiver Quentin Johnston can make a second year leap. Every time you put on the tape, you see the talent, and I expect him to make the jump. I know we have the right coaches to help him make the jump. Nice little dig. Previous coaching staff, and uh, get him get him ready with yeah. the new guys. Yeah. Well, and that's I don't see a world I don't see a world where Quentin doesn't take a leap. Yeah. You know? he, I, I just think I really do think the more that more the time that passes, he fits more of that Keenan Allen role. He likes being inside, getting the ball quick and trying to make something happen. He's not Mike Williams. He's not. Right. And I think we thought we all saw the writing on the wall that Mike was going to be gone soon and then he'll slide in. Parma will take the Keenan. We were trying to fit pieces together that just right. weren't. It's like that puzzle piece. You're like Damn it! This is supposed to fit. Yeah, you just it looks it like there. it fits here, but it's yeah. not. Clicking. But then you put it in, and it's all cockeyed, like this, right. standing up straight. It's so. bent, and you're slamming the table, going, "Get in the yeah. freaking!" <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
No, um, he's got to be able to make a jump. The other thing that's interesting too, when you say that, Kyle, is that the idea that Marvin Harrison might be a better fit in the sense that he's like an X and he can play outside, and Malik Neighbors is better in the slot. Like he's better with those quick, you know, those quick routes. So if you do push QJ in, and Marvin Harrison might be the better complement. To what a that young receiver. receiving core we went to Ooh, if that some, ends up happening. Some babies. They get to, they get to grow and mm. blossom into this yeah. beautiful mm. garden of wide receivers. <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> it's going to be a bumper crop. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited. The, the guy's got to be able to make a jump. I, I feel like really a lot of the issues that he had was coaching related and i have full faith in this coaching staff to be able to turn all of that around and get him on the right path totally um and then adam Schefter tweeting out baltimore free agent uh running back jk dobbins scheduled to visit today with the los angeles chargers per his agency laa sports coming off a torn achilles dobbins has now been cleared for football activity he could reunite with chargers oc greg roman for whom he averaged 5.8 yards per carry in Baltimore. Six yards per carry? That's a that lot. Is filthy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, J.K. Dobbins, Dobbins is next level running back as long as he can stay healthy. Right. But the benefit of this situation is you're going to, he's not going to get more than a one year deal. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's no. He's going to get a one year, almost like league minimum for the vet type of deal because. He's never had a full season. It's the perfect kind of prove-it contract that it seems like everyone we're signing is taking. I mean, how many one-year deals have we given out this offseason? I think they've all been one-year deals. We're just yeah, all few. we're just trying to get all the bridge guys to where we have guys to be able to fit spots this year until we can get a couple draft classes deep and we can get a little bit more relief from the cap hits that a JC Jackson that's not even on the team is causing. So I think I think there's a I w- I would totally make sense to me that J.K. Dobbins ends up on the Chargers on a one year league minimum prove it type of deal and can add so much depth like you don't have to be the guy also an Ohio State guy in case Marvin Harrison needs a little bit of a it's true a tour guide <laughs> it's true and then More it's very true and then Big Bear is also there there'll be a lot of uh, you kind of if you're gonna do that you you're gonna guys. really. You're gonna have to dip heavy into the Michigan pool for the draft. I don't think I don't think Harbaugh can allow a heavier, you know, Ohio Doesn't State the scale amount of players. To tip too far. You gotta keep you gotta keep it even, dude. You Everything yeah. in perfect balance. True. Yeah. Um, so you, then, you you pick up J.K. Dobbins, draft Blake Corum. That equalizes everything. Could you imagine that all. that running back room? <laughs> That'd be insane. Corum, oh, Gus, okay. and Gus J.K. That'd be sick. And Isaiah is your number four. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's exciting. I like it. Um, Adam Schefter also tweeting out NFL owners voted to approve the new kickoff rule. Uh, We feel this is a great day for the NFL. (laughs) The New Orleans Saints special teams coordinator, Darren Rizzi, who worked closely on the proposal, said Tuesday, we've taken a play that's essentially been dying over the course of the last few years, in our opinion, and we revived it. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but it's pretty exciting. Um, it's I, really been, interesting. It's it's a very dy- it's going to have to retrain our brains a little bit because there a are lot. some yeah. more stipulations about how this works. Um, but we're you know listening to you know Chris Harry and Matt Money. Money's like, dude, we have the perfect re- uh, return guy for this setup. Like, mm-hmm. could not be in a better situation. You remember last year we drafted Darius as a returner, and then they changed the rules last year to make it basically useless to have a yeah. returner. So you just a like, punt returner. Oh wow, that was a bummer of a draft pick. And now flip it on its head, we have the best return guy in a in a league now that you're going to have giant returns. Yeah. Totally redeemed themselves. And and you have a special teams coordinator that's all world and ficken that now can get even more creative on. I can't wait to see the blocking scheme of how all the like. I could see guys pulling the type of bodies that you put in there. Like, do you have big boy bodies in the middle? Because you don't have to run very far. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're just kind of sticking still. I don't know. It, I think it's going to be fun to see how it all shakes out. And it's going to yeah. take a few. Whoever can be creative fastest is going to have a huge advantage because everyone's going to be trying to play catch up as the season goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Darius Davis, I'm pretty sure. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think he was like second team all pro. Last year, he's voted on by the rookie. players. Yeah, voted on by the players. He was like yeah. the best. He, they that's what all the players said was the best return guy. In yeah. League. So so yeah, I want to see him get involved as a wide receiver too. I think this is going to be a big year for Darius. I really do. Hmm. 
Invest in that Darius Davis stock, everybody. Yeah. Buy now. All right. Well, what else you can buy is a membership to our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. That was good. Oh, that Check was out great. all the funny, silly-ass videos we got over there. We just had our Zoom hangout this last Saturday, and we had a hell of a time. Everybody was driving. We were honking horns and yelling at pedestrians. It was great. It was awesome. Definitely go check it out. Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. And if you don't want to go over there, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, ChargerChat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions and ask Bolt fam. So go check out ChargerChat.com. All right, gang. It's time to go on to the next segment. You know them. You love them. It's the Craig Experience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on in, man. Kick your feet up. Oh. Great. Experience. Hello there. Make yourself at home. Got some stuff to talk about, right? Moving on. What's up? We are inching ever so closely to the draft, a little over three weeks away. Of course, you know I'm excited about it. I look forward to this every single year. Most of you guys out there do too. It's an opportunity for the team to grow. We do know that it is going to look a little differently in years past as some of the names are no longer with the squad. Some that you expected, a few maybe not so much, but it's the nature of the business and also new regime. So. This week, we're going to continue on with the theme of talking about some maybe under the radar players that you probably haven't heard of that I think would be good fits for the Chargers in positions of need. And so with that being said, let's get to the business. Welcome, CC gang. The biggest of salutes and to the rest of the Bull fam, what is goody? She got Craig in Texas. Welcome again to this newest edition of the Craig experience. I'm a little more excited this week to talk about this prospect, not just because of who it is, but because of the position he played. May have mentioned this in the past, but um, yeah, I was a wide receiver, but before that, all the way up into my sophomore year of high school, I played running back, literally, from park ball up until 10th grade is all I knew. Well, aside from playing safety on defense, but on the offensive side of the ball, was a running back through and through. And it sucks to see what's happened to the position in the NFL as far as it being devalued. I mean, the top guys are still awesome. But at the end of the day, the league has shifted over into finding guys maybe later in the draft, maybe even some undrafted rookie free agent cats. I mean, the Chargers are very well familiar with that with Austin Eckler. And um, teams have proven that they can make runs towards championships and even win them without having to spend high draft capital or spend a ton of money on running backs. I mean, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. (laughs) They drafted Clyde Edwards-Alaire a couple years back in the first round, I believe, at Patrick Mahomes' request. And that didn't work out all that well. And then they circle back and they take a guy in what sixth, seventh round. He ends up being a better overall back, and they win a couple of championships with him, toting the pill. And Clyde Edwards Alaire is what free agent right now. So there you have it. Just is what it is. Oh, fickle, fickle position, and the league views it in a really, really strange way. But still very important. You folks out there know how I am. I'm an old school football cat. It's the running game for me first and then solid defense, which is what Jim Harbaugh is all about. So I'm not about to sit here and wax poetic about Jim. Y'all know how I feel about him. It's just perfect situation. The ideal coach for the exact style of football that I prefer. So with that being said, let's not delay this any longer. Rasheena Lee, running back from Marshall. Yes, that Marshall. We are Marshall. Uh, Randy Moss Marshall. Green squad. Yeah, them folks. 5'11", a little over 200 pounds. Now, you're thinking, that's not like really an every down back size. Well, not necessarily, but he's also not a guy that you're looking to hand the ball off to 25 to 30 times a game. He'll be a part of a committee. What he is, though, is explosive. And to me, he fits what's missing in the Chargers backfield as it's currently constructed. Uh, Got Gus Bus Edwards. Also, I still believe in Isaiah Spiller. 
But what Ali brings is, again, that level of explosiveness is a guy who any given touch can take the ball to the house. And whether that's handing the ball off or getting him the ball in space in the passing game, equally adept. Uh, now, he's dealt with some injuries here in the past. If you go back to 2022, his sophomore season, um, he dealt with some personal stuff as well as injuries. So he ended up sitting out the majority of that year. Um, and also here recently at the Senior Bowl, he was really showing out and then he suffered a torn bicep. So he wasn't able to test at the combine. And I'm not sure if he's going to be working out his pro day or not. But I really would love to see those numbers because, man, Duke can go from the tape super explosive when we're talking about from an acceleration standpoint getting up to top speed um those first couple steps after the handoff elite um when he breaks it into the open field looks like he has really really good top end speed if not elite i would say he's probably a low 4-4 maybe high 4-3 guy kind of hard to tell but again just wish he was able to test but just looking at it from what i've seen on the tape plenty of speed to burn so if you go back and watch him he may remind you of someone that you are familiar with. Well, his style of run, running, should I say. Remember uh, Justin Jackson from Northwestern? Good old J-Jack. And that really shifty kind of herky-jerky style that he ran with. Well, Ali is similar to him in build. And the running style looks a bit like Jackson's, but he runs more under control. And again, he's more explosive, definitely a speedier guy. But if you find yourself going back and looking at Rasheen Ali tape or highlights, whatever you choose, you probably remind you of someone nine times out of 10, it'll be Jackson. So as far as some of the other things that he does really well, well, let me give you some more background on them. In 2021, Ali actually led college football while well, he tied um, in rushing TDs with 21. So high level of production. He had over 1400 yards rushing and he was first team all conference that year. That was his freshman season. That was before the sophomore season where he had to sit out for a while at the injuries and the personal stuff that I spoke to um, a little bit earlier, but he did come back in 2023 after dealing with those scenarios and injuries. And uh, I mean, he had over 15 touchdowns and 1100 yards again. So picked up pretty similarly to where he left off. Uh, Marshall was not a very good team overall. So mm, keep that in uh, your back pocket when you're considering not just the level of competition, but how he was able to perform, uh, you know, there's always going to be questions about that when you're not in one of the upper echelon conferences and playing with one of those top teams. But still, the production is what the production is. Uh, I really, really love his ability to make super sharp cuts without sacrificing speed. That's really rare. Um, the best athletes are able to do that. And that's where he shines on tape as well. Uh, a question you may get, again, depending on how far into these things you look like, if you're a maniac like me and you start wondering about fit and the type of schemes that they could play in or a player like this would be best served in, he's probably more of a zone guy, whereas the Chargers will be running a whole lot more power gap duo stuff. But I think he could I think he could shine here. One of the reasons why is because when we're talking about a guy that transforms when they get into the red zone. He's that dude. It goes from being a slasher and shifty in space to when you get inside of the 10 yard line, all he sees is red. He turns into a guy who's looking to make people miss to someone who's looking to run through catch to get to the end zone because he understands that it's about the six and not the three. So he ain't playing around. Uh, once you get into the red zone, it's all about that action. And again, even though he's not the biggest of backs, his mentality shifts into that of one, the closer the ball gets to the end zone. So, got to love that. Where he ends up falling in the draft. Yeah, just based on how this overall class is viewed, wouldn't be shocked to see him still hanging around 5th, 6th round. If, if he goes undrafted, I'd be a little surprised. Uh, but the Chargers can get their hands on him in the later rounds. Just looking at how this backfield is starting to play out and the way that he would be able to complement it, I'd be over the moon about it. And I think if you start looking into his background a little bit, view some tape on him, you'll probably see what I'm talking about and possibly like him as well. But that's my guy for this week. Anywho, if you want to see a little bit more in-depth breakdown about him, you can check me out over on the Lightning Round podcast. We did our running backs uh, last week, week before last. I'm losing track of time here as I'm getting older. Everything just seems to bunch together. But yeah. Got a little bit more uh, into the weeds about him in addition to some other guys. So follow me over there, but also on Twitter 
at top underscore flyt3. And until the next time, y'all know who it is, Mr. Bolt Gang or Do Not Bang. And uh, I appreciate y'all for spending time with me. Fellas, hope all is well on you guys' end. Love y'all. And until the next time, everyone else. Okay. Love you. Bye. We love you too, Craig. I love me some Craig. Oh, nothing but love, Craig. Well, that's great. That's a, yeah, that's, I was, I was expecting to hear a name of like somebody that we've heard, but that's not what he's doing. He's talking about guys that nobody's talking about, like Rasheen day, Ali. Day three, boys. We're looking I love for that. some day three years. That's very interesting. Yeah. For especially a running back that tied touchdowns for all running backs. 21 touchdowns being that's on a, a bad team. That's considerable. Yeah. So, no, I'd, I would love to see his speed, what he's able to do, like you said, with the testing, see how fast he really is. Because mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to tell how that's going to translate to the NFL a little bit when right. you're playing at a smaller school. You're yeah. not quite you up against the same the competition. You want to see him on the field, right? And he played in a senior bowl, and it doesn't it doesn't sound like he... I didn't I didn't keep track a lot of Rasheen from the green machine. Rasheen, I like you. that. It's a little right. <laughs> hey. Um but that's that's when I think these small school guys, you have to see how they do. They can test off the charts. It's fine. Right. Um, but like what do they look like on the field with the division one big school guys? Because it's only gonna get more of a discrepancy once they're on the field with the NFL players. Right. Sure. Um, so I think it would be fun to go back and watch. Um, that's why I appreciate getting names like this tossed around. It's like, okay, cool. Now I know how to where to go back and watch a little bit of film. If this guy starts popping up on boards. Um, and when we do our mock drafts, you see where he's landing. It's it's fun. So thanks, Craig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Craig. Really appreciate thanks, it, man. buddy. Um, all right, gang. Well, it's time to go on to the next segment. Ask Bolt Fam. Three weeks away from the draft. Oh, shit. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like, totally appreciate it. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bull Fam. And we start at the top with Daryl21, who asked the question. Guys, as a Christian man, I don't want to say or feel this, but what the f***? <laughs> Sitting here on a Thursday afternoon, enjoying my daily Charger content on YouTube, and while watching Believe in Chargers with Matt Money and Lo Neal, I noticed our brisket broads have a segment of the Chargers main channel. And I thought, awesome! Oh, can't wait to catch this. Hoo-ha! Our ladies get a piece of some recognition. I start watching it. Oh, I'm digging it. Oh, until I see the horrible comments from certain members of our fan base. Oh, I'm honestly so disappointed in the comments that I literally come on here midweek to vent on a platform that we dig with you guys at Charger Chat. And I say, thank you for sticking up for the ladies in the comment sections. Hoo-ha. We're having the best offseason we've had in decades. And then certain fans have to jump online on our own team's page, nonetheless, and take a massive shit unknown to mankind right on our own field. Hoo-ha. Thanks, Wolf Dog, Kevin, and Kyle, for everything you guys do to give us great content week in and week out. And thank you, Brisket Broads. You ladies define what class is. K love you by who fing ha. <laughs> uh, that's a good voice request for that. For oh, sure. he's, oh boy. he's fired up. <laughs> he's got angry. <laughs> he's got angry there. Yeah, I, the broads are the broads, man. I don't know. I I don't love I, the broads. I didn't understand this. This was a Kind of a shock, to be honest. I didn't. I didn't see this coming. So it's sad that people will say these kinds of things without ever meeting yeah. them. Yeah. Um, it, it's I, kind of weird, and I don't. I don't. I don't like it. It's. It's not great for our fan base yeah. when we're trying to build our fan base, get new fans, and uh, what, know. what. What are you showing by doing this? It's not. That you know, was. That was the big warm. thing to me. It's like everyone is upset that they're new fan, newer fans. They've been. But let me tell you, the amount of fandom that they've packed into the last two, three seasons, yeah, it's a lot. They have decades worth of fandom in there. They've been to more oh, yeah. Charger games, I think, than I've been in my That's whole life. That's the thing, man. These ladies travel to every away game. Mm-hmm. Every away it, game. It, here's the thing. Everyone wants to complain about how many Charger fans are at the game, right? Like, I, I, At least I think that's a pretty consistent theme. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you're going to talk crap to the people that jumped on board and got all in on it. 
Like that doesn't make that that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you're ne- never going to grow as a fan base if you don't allow anyone else anyone in. Yeah, because the the brisket broads of anyone have come in with the most class and excitement and writing cards for players that get hurt and yeah. like they just they do all of the the nice things and then you're just jealous because they got a segment. I, I saw some people saying like, why didn't you, What? why them? They've only been this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, because they're doing stuff, Bozo. They're actually out there <laughs> being a yeah. part of the fan base. You've watched for 30 years on your couch that, that you've not had impact. Yeah, whatever they call the me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been like, sitting here no waiting. No one knows. Why, why would they know to call you? Like, you thought, yeah. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. It's just a weird kind of like this jealousy thing and i think once it's all said and done when you look back look back at it and be like maybe that was a little embarrassing that i went so hard at yeah. these girls and then going hard at the social media team for highlighting them like if your know, goal like, is to get on about? this or be a part of this in some way it was kind of going about it the most f-ed up way you possibly Swing can and a miss. so you know <laughs> I, not much else more to say about it rehashing this isn't yeah. good for anyone and you know you know do you fan the way you want to fan but you know we're we're we we're see it. Broads. We yeah. see it. We're team broads. Yeah. Love the brisket broads. And look and really love that they did that segment with them. That was very Yeah, it was sweet. great. And yeah. And they and they, they used some of the footage. We went around with them during a tailgate. The, some of the footage that we shot with them, they put in that video, which was cool. Yeah. So that was a cool, it was a cool video. And Kevin's still highlight. waiting for that paycheck. <laughs> still <laughs> waiting for yeah. camera work. <laughs> Looking for some residuals from just that. a little bit. He just wants <laughs> yeah. to wet his beak a little. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Kevin Darryl... would just keep the check from the Chargers. I don't think you'd ever cash it. <laughs> oh I'd no, frame yeah. it. just put it in a frame. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, you know, the quality of work was amazing. <laughs> Probably get a couple pennies, but it would get framed and put on the wall for sure. Hundred percent signed by Dean Spanos. Oh, that's right. He owes me. <laughs> <laughs> I want my two cents, Dean. <laughs> I want my two dollars. <laughs> Daryl twenty one. Thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Mister Peck R. Who asked the question? Well, hello there, my beamingly beautiful, brawny, bolted, big boys in blue. <laughs> How are you? I am hoping that you are doing better than those boring, bland, barfastically bitter babies that showed up on the YouTube and X to try and spread negativity on our brave, bubbly, brainy, beloved whiskey broads. <laughs> it was downright blah. So gold star to you guys and those that stood up for our friends. Now back to some positivity. Would each of you share your most positive feeling that you have had as a Charger fan in the past and in the present? No copycats and y'all are awesome. Bosa Max Zack Attack is back. BTFU, Bolt Fan, Bolt Gang, same thing. FTR, K love you, bye. A lot of bees in that. Lot of bees. I love it. That was <laughs> like he's rolling, baby. He's rolling. Um, yes, it was. Uh, again, love the brisket broads and everything they do. Um, yeah. But trying to think, our most positive feeling you've had as a Charger fan in the past and in the present. Hmm. Most positive feeling for for me, it's uh, fan focuses because okay. like I get to meet other fans and like. By the end of it, like we hit the stop recording button and we talk for another five, 10 minutes and like get mm-hmm. to know each other. And then that's amazing. And then like, you know, Tony Rodella, the guy's amazing, um, messages me like, just like, have a good day, man. I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't have this if I didn't have yeah. the Chargers and Charger fans. So right. um, that, yeah. that really, because I've been a fan of the team forever, but this is a new part that really makes me happy and excited to be a part of like a clan. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I think going top to, that boys. No, settle down. gauntlet. <laughs> <I don't> think, <laughs> right. It doesn't have to be a competition. Uh, it doesn't have to be a competition. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. You just made it one. I know no. I did, and I take it back. Go ahead yeah. and say okay, something. Okay. Nice. Get ready for the right. SmackDown. Here it um, comes. <laughs> no, I was I was gonna say going to tailgates is like my most. I feel like the most positive about the Chargers. Just walking around from like hangout to hangout, and yeah, I feel like what do you think? Like how what's what's today gonna look like? Everyone's like. So positive and excited. I'm not, I haven't been to a tailgate where they're like, yeah, today we're going to get smoked. Like, we're just, we're not good. But blah, blah, blah. it's like that feeling before the game, everything is in front of you. It's all Charger fans hanging out, having fun. Uh, it's all your buds. I, that's, I, there's no way to top the positivity that you feel. Even when you're at home alone, getting ready to watch a game, you don't have those other people to kind of hype you up. So, right. yeah, it's um, different. Yeah. 
I think the tailgates at at SoFi is when I feel, and even away games when we went to Arrowhead and we found a whole group of Charger fans over there. We'll gaggle, um, yeah. It's the most positive that I feel as a Charger fan. Yeah, the most positive feeling. I mean, it's going to sound like a cop out, but I mean, it's really doing this podcast. It's every aspect of this is because you know we came on and did this in a way to be shamelessly positive about Mm -hmm. this team and it because now anytime like anytime i feel like something negative comes up it feels wrong it feels dirty it's like (laughs) i'm not saying you can't be critical but it's like if you're just coming on to be shitty it's like hey come on dude like that's not what this is about this is about rooting for this team and being positive and, and trying to get things going and you know finding other people that have that similar mind and have that similar mindset of just like yeah let's let's be positive about this you know like yeah but Mm -hmm. you know let's root for these guys and and try to find the silver lining i think that's the big thing is like there's always a silver lining it's not like this isn't a dog shit team by any stretch of the imagination not always going to be playing the best but you know what there's some great things to be had on this team and with and doing this podcast has been great because now i get to learn more things from kyle kevin always makes me laugh what more could you want Who's got it better than us? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so there you go, Mr. Pekar. Thank you Thanks, for asking brother. the question. Let's move it on now to Tony Francis. Anthony. Who asked the question? What's up, Wooldog, Kev, and Coach? I've been down here in San Diego visiting family all week for Easter. I found myself at a few Padres baseball games. Much to my surprise, I get a message from Kev. I was at the game on Friday night, letting me know that Coach Kyle was also at the game. I immediately get a big smile on my face, thinking that this was going to be my fish taco moment (laughs) with Coach, and we were finally going to meet up in person. I went to send Coach a message on Instagram to see if he wanted to meet up, but realized he needed to accept my follow request. In order to even chat, I did what any other normal Charger chatteteer would do and sent the request thinking he would accept in minutes so we could meet up. Now it's been almost three days. Nothing. (laughs) My question is directed straight at Coach Kyle. How dare you? (laughs) Let me buy. Oh man! <laughs> How dare you? How dare you <laughs> come in to my stadium? <laughs> oh. Oh, Fish shit. tacos cold now. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I really have no defense there. I don't. I'm shame, sorry. shame. Yeah, shame on me. Yeah. I did accept it. I don't know when it happened, but I accepted it. We've been. You've been DMing today. He went back to the game tonight and he said he thought uh, he saw me on the big screen. Now you're making so, up for it. <laughs> yeah. Now we're chatting. Now we're buds. <laughs> Total brass. There you go. Well, I, I, you love, I love this. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a long time drive on how Kyle fucked you. It was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> but everything's cool now. Everything's well, fine. We're, we're, we're cool fine. now. We're cool. We're, fine. We're, we're, we're all good. We're all good. I'm not the big social media guy. That's Kev. So just go to yeah. him to get to me. <laughs> Be yeah. My yeah. <laughs> yeah, ask Kevin to poke Kyle so that I'll be his. Yeah, I'll be his second his DMs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure there's a fish taco in the future there, Tony. But thank you for asking yes. the question. Uh, let's move it on now to Coach Lago, who asked the question. Happy Easter to you, beautiful triumvirate of goofy buttholes and the Bolt fam. Hope everyone had a great day with the family. The special 10 hang on Saturday was awesome. Really looking forward to the next one where we can chat about the new players on our bolts. Hugs, you tell me. Was I right? Who is it, Hugs? I need answers. There's no love in this one, so K bye unless you tell me. <laughs> All right, this is some inside baseball, but yeah, set it up. <laughs> there were some rumors of things that happened. I don't know how to set it up without doing mm. it, but so uh, hmm. <laughs> hmm. choose so, your words wisely, my friend. We heard a rumor close to the grapevine about something for the team, and it came up on 
the the chat um, <laughs> and, and on the special ten hangout, uh-huh. and somebody asked a question, i.e., Lago, that he he was guessing who who we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I would say it's a good guess. Was it the right guess? I don't know. I think that's that's my final answer. Okay. <laughs> so I guess there's no love <laughs> from Coach Just Lago. K bye. <laughs> Just K bye. That's it. Sorry, Lago. Well, we can neither well, confirm nor deny, I guess, is the answer to that. Correct. Uh Coach Lago. So thank you for asking the question. Uh let's move it on now to Jim Harbaugh's burner account. Who asked the question? What would you consider trading Minnesota for number five? For me, it's 11, 23, and next year's one to even think about it. Boat up. Marvin Harrison's son and my boy Malik from LSU could be Hall of Famers. Okay, that's all. So 11, two first round picks would be pretty awesome. And then next year. Next year's next first. year's first, yeah. That's pretty that's prime. I don't it's know back for me, to back I, years of two first round picks. It's pretty great. I would be okay with, you know, if we got some more this year. If you got like a, yeah. a third and like a fifth. I, I don't know what, what they're gonna be able to get you know out of them, but uh, moving to eleven would work too if if na- if uh Marvin Harrison's not there. So mm-hmm. if, if he's not there, Give me 11. 11's yeah. the move because you can get two first round picks um, and then maybe a little, 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 little side something next year. A side of fries, something, yeah. something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think as long as you get, I don't know. Yeah. If you can get two first and a, a second or third, I think that's enough. You're only going back six spots. You're not, you're not dropping to the end of the first round. Right. Um, so when you look at like the v- trade value chart, now Harbaugh did say, throw that out the window if four quarterbacks yeah. go before us. Right, exactly. Um, Come at me, bro. But the number five pick is valued at 1,700 and the number 11 at 1,250. So that's only a 450-point difference. Um, and if you swap and you get another first, technically, like you get their other first this year, that technically has already consumed all of the point differential for the trade. Right. So um, I, I think asking for another first next year just to go back six spots in a in a draft that you're assuming that means one of the quarterbacks fell back. Um, yeah, I think if, if you can get you swap first, if you can pick up a first or a second, another first or second, and then like a fourth, I think you're I'd, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, same. Yeah, third or fourth, that'd be sweet. Yeah, but I wouldn't hate another first in the no draft. That would playing, be the playing the playing hard. That'd be rad too. Ball, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because honestly, yeah, I want to see them build this team up as much as they can this year. Because obviously, you know, it's new coaching staff and everything like that. You want them to get their guys, but this is this is a multiple year endeavor, obviously, yeah. for this coaching staff. So to get another first round pick in the following draft next year, I mean, yes, I'll take I'll take that all day long. But any one of those, I mean, he's going to be able to. If we get more picks this year, he's picking more guys that he's researched and played against and knows or worked with. So I'm all for yeah. that too. Yeah. Oh, check, check this though. The Vikings do have not have a second or third round pick. Ah, well, so there you go. First, they have two firsts, two fourths, two fifths, a six and two sevens. Okay. So they don't have a second or third to offer in a trade for this year. So, so yeah, that might be two firsts and a fourth, two firsts and a fourth. Yeah. Maybe yep. I could get by. Maybe. That. We'll see what ends up going down on draft day. But Jim Harbaugh's burner account, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Kyle Goodwin, who asked the question. Listen, boys, this season is going to be sexy as Justin Herbert in lingerie fishing gear. Yes, I'm a male that likes ladies. And yes, that would still be sexy, but like sports sexy, a raging, throbbing boat per se. Like, honestly, maybe I've watched too many of you guys, but 17 and oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, God, I think I just booted all over myself. Seems like a real possibility. As Jim Harbaugh says, we will be like five fingers of a fist and shove that fist all, all up in our opponent's dark forbidden crevices. I want to feel them clench as we cause oh them God. pain with defeat. I could go on and on, but I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. Anyway... If a trade down happens, would you rather a modest return from, say, the Vikings or taking an absolute booty of picks from the Raiders or Broncos? K love you by FTFR. Felt a little uncomfortable, not gonna lie. Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> just the pinch. Well, I think it was the clinching. I had to stop, really. I had to stop making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop making eye contact with Wooly. <laughs> That's fine. That's why I don't look at the camera when I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. I got to look off to the side. Otherwise, <laughs> it gets weird. It's it weird. But um, that's an interesting concept. I mean, Vikings have been a team that they've talked about trading with the Chargers, but trading with a team within your division where you could just take as much as you want just, or just reap the benefits calls. of all the draft picks. It's dirty, I know, but think of the well, benefits. I don't want to make <laughs> I don't them. I give them. I don't want yeah. to make them better at all. Right? Amen. Yeah. If you're trading with them, that means they're getting a shot at either Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. And as many picks as you can get either. from that, or a quarterback. Yeah. And as many picks as you could get from that trade, uh, you just. You well, don't those guys don't have the extra first round. So I'm I'm going with the team that can get me two first round picks this year. There that That is more appetizing. Then right. the Broncos don't really have many picks. They don't have, they don't have, yeah, they don't have much. Here. Yeah. They don't have much to offer. And then the Raiders, much. they, I don't want, I, yeah, I would, I would much rather take a modest return and the Vikings can get a quarterback than do any, have any part of one of them actually hitting on a quarterback for the one time in their franchise history. Mm -hmm. And then they can hold that over us. No, I don't want to, I don't want to well, be a part of that. With the Raiders, just remember this, they have Tom Telesco and he, yeah, he ain't trading. He would bad. never trade up. No, no. He, he did it pick. once for a linebacker, but that was a mistake. A weird mistake. Yeah. He just doesn't yeah. do that. He's going to sit there and wait. And that's, that's his move. So we have at least some insight on that. <laughs> he's not giving up the farm to us for the that one day. time. He's like, okay, everybody tells me to trade. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then he did it and like, Oh, I messed up. I'm sorry. Oh, I won't do it my, again. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. My bad. All right. So there you go. Kyle Goodwin. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Manuelito Perito, who asked the question. Sup, Party P. Happy draft month. How exciting is it this year? Feel my arms. I have goose pimples. Feel my chest. I have hard nipples. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait. Quick quest for this week. Uh, with the whole new coaching staff. Do y'all think we'll be seeing the starters in preseason? Just 25 more days, guys. Much love with squeezing tight hugs. Pedito out. Uh, That's a good one, Pedito. Yeah, this one, me. Manuelito Pedito. Manuelito Pedito. I love, I love that. That's a great name. The, the no, nipples. these are great. Every week, he's been killing it. Like uh, this, this is a good question. This. this is a good. This is what I was just about to say. This is a good question because there's a whole can of worms that we would just like lean on that we know we we you know we're used to. Right. Everything is going to be open for whatever mm -hmm. moving forward because we first time coach for the Chargers and it's going to be crazy, dude. I don't know. And if you're trying to manifest toughness in your team, you're playing. it doesn't feel like you're going to sit them out. That? Yeah. Pre yeah. Preseason <laughs> games, you know, like. They're going to get some playing time in the preseason to get some live action and like hit people, which you can't really do in practice. So, right. Yeah. Um, yeah I think, I think you will see a little bit more playing time. It, it may just be one game as a precaution to keep them safe, but sure. I think maybe week two of the preseason, you might actually see some live reps from some of the starters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope so. It hasn't really worked out well for us to sit everyone all the time. No, they still get hurt. Yeah, and exactly. They're just not ready for week one. Right. Yeah. And even in the Philip Rivers days, we'd see Phil go out there in his later years and playing in preseason games. It's like he need to couple necessarily series. need to. Yeah, but he'd go yeah. out there, play a couple series, and then step right out. So I think we probably will. That's my guess. I'm going to say that we do. But uh, only time will tell. Mm -hmm. uh, Manuelito oh. Pedito, oh. thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Marco DeLeo, 
who asked the question. Well done. Hey guys, this one is for each of you. Understanding that this is the first year under Harbaugh, what would you consider a failure for this season? Missing the playoffs? How many losses would you be able to handle and be okay with it? Also, did you see the odds for our bolts? K love you, bye. Few questions in here. Uh, what would you consider a failure for this season? That's interesting. Under 500. If we're, yeah, going, really? if we're not 500, that's a failure. Yeah. Yeah. Because that would be, I, that, even, I mean, that's a blemish on Jim Harbaugh. Like every, yeah. he's been having winning seasons everywhere he's gone. So if you got one under 500, that'd be like, ooh. Yeah. Cause even nine and eight could get you in the playoffs. So I just think under right. 500, you're not even in contention. You're not, no one's talking about you. Right. Under 500 is a failure. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the expectations are so high for us now. It's across all platforms. It's every, you know, all the talking heads. Everyone thinks we're making the playoffs. So I think if we don't win a playoff game, it's a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Like you bring in the staff, you pay them all this money, you get all this going. If if you don't get a playoff win, I don't, I consider that would be not great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We got to, we got to win these babies. Yeah. So um, that would be a failure missing the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, how many losses would you be able to handle and be okay with it? Whatever that, gets us into the playoffs. <laughs> that's exactly how many. Yeah. Even if we got to get in by the skin of our teeth, that's how many we'd be okay with. Yeah. Uh, and did you see the odds for our bolts? I'm not sure what he's referring to. Is that for like the, Super, the Super Bowl, Bowl winning? In the Super Bowl. Did our did our odds go up from getting Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> I definitely. Well, I'm sure they went up. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Let's see. Where I'm sure I, he's at the top for getting. Uh, what is it? Head coach of the year? Coach, coach of, the year, of yeah. the year? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure our our odds for winning the Super Bowl have gone up exponentially. Uh, so but Chargers right now, this was March 28th, so a couple days ago. Okay. Chargers are plus 3,000, which is kind of middle of the pack. Yeah. It's right in the middle. That's probably where right it should be. Yeah. Yeah. After the draft, I guarantee you that's going to go up. We're behind the Falcons on the... that's. That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. Well, they just got Kirk Cousins, so maybe they're they got Kirk Cousins. Extra weight into that. Yeah, that probably has never won anything ever. <laughs> yeah, and his Achilles is not great right now. And he's old. I don't know. Like he's a go K quarterback, but he's not like sure. an odds changer. Right. Well, I guess depends on who you ask. I don't depends like that. I don't like those, honestly, the I don't like those odds, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Marco. Oh, no, it wasn't Andrew. It was Marco. Yeah, Marco. Sorry, Andrew's Andrew. coming up here. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Marco. That's all right. This is a well, good time to put a bet on him, though. If three thousand plus three thousand, that's a that's a bet I can I can put some money on. All right, time to go to Vegas. Get back there. Let's go, go on. Go right, on. No. Go. I need to threaten me with a good that's time. All, <laughs> once a year. all right, Marco Deleo. Thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Andrew Ramsey, who asked the question. What's up, Charger Chat? I understand Bradley Bozeman is here to be a bridge to a future center, but do you agree with a rookie in week one at center if drafted within the first three rounds? I'm done with this team selection of free agency pickups or trades. Go ahead and get that rapport now and start growing into your role instead of trotting out a potential vet bust. Uh, below were the team's last decade of pickups via free agency or trade. You got Joe Barksdale at right tackle, injuries, mental health cut, Brian Balaga, injuries and cut. Russell Lacoon, medical, traded for Trey Turner, who was cut after nine games. Corey Lindsley, medical, retired. Mike Pouncey, injury, retired. Orlando Franklin, bust, cut. Jared Gaither, bust, cut. King Dunlap might be the only decent one. Voted Chargers Lineman of the Year in 2014. Uh, received a four-year extension, but then cut two years into the extension. K, love you, bye. Well, I'm excited for our new GM because none of these were his problem. That's right. Um, but we definitely have not hit on any of these. And a lot of these were bigger contracts too, right? They paid oh, these yeah. guys. So this wasn't like what we're doing right now with these one-year these one year deals, like prove-it deals, like guys that have right. a lot of potential. They just maybe weren't in the best spot or they haven't lived up to their potential. And maybe that the coaching and all the stuff we have on our team right now is going to pull people up and give them more opportunities. So yeah, um, yeah. We could get a look at that. Yeah, I don't starting a, a center week one in the NFL is gonna be tough. I mean, 
they're they have to be the captain of the offensive line. And a lot of the times they're making the adjustments, they're calling out the mic, they're shifting the the pass protection. Um, that's really really hard to do. So I I, I like the idea as a rookie. Yeah yeah, yeah. I like yeah. the idea of Bozeman being the guy for at least the first half of the season. And if he's not playing well, yeah, you make the change. But if if we're winning and he's playing great. I love rookies being able to learn for a whole year before being thrust into action. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I do understand though. It's like in our past, it's been like, why are we doing this? But Corey Lindsay, it's not as if he came in in week one, he was bad. You know, like he, he right. was a great center until he could. Corey was the anymore. best player on this list, in my opinion. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And so I don't know. I, I think looking, if you look back at the history, yeah, it hasn't worked out well. They've, free agent offensive lineman, but you, you, you can't just only go based on that. We have a new GM, new head coach, new system. They know this guy. He played for him previously. <laughs> I don't think that's true of any of these other players. They were picked right. up as free agents with unknowns. And who's our offensive lineman coach? Yeah. Come on. Hardwick Mr. can make Hardwick. anybody great. Yeah. At center. Yeah. None of these oh, guys yeah. had Hardwick as their offensive line coach. Nah. So come on now. Come a on. couple of them played with him though. Oh yeah. Jared Gaither and Franklin. So, yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think that, you know, that's definitely going to be the way to go. Rookie center coming in and actually being able to compete with other, like, defensive linemen. Like, you want to put a rookie center in with a def the defensive line that we're going to have with, you know, Bosa and Mack and, and Thule out there and Derwin James coming in, sneaking in, and you got a center that's just coming out of college. Come on now. Yeah. I think I think Trial it's going to be okay. Yeah, and I think it's going to be okay though. I think with a new coaching staff, new GM, these guys see different talent in these players. I mean, we picked up Bozeman for a reason. It's not just like, well, what do we? What's out there? Bozeman? Okay, I guess we'll take Bozeman. They picked yeah. Bozeman. They wanted him for a reason. They saw something in him that they think will translate to the field, and we're going to have a whole off season to figure out if he's the right fit or not. Well, that's what coach always, the, he keeps talking about competition, competition at every, yeah. every spot. So there's yeah. going to be, gonna be a competitive ass team and guys that were brought in, like you got to earn your spot. Like if we got a rookie, if you got powers, was it powers Johnson? Yeah. You got Frazier. If you get one of these other centers coming in and they're outperforming you, that's the natural thing. And he's on a, you know, is it a one or two year deal for Bozeman? I can't remember, but you know, one year. Yeah. He's, yeah. I think he's, it's just one. Yeah. So bridge guy. come and compete. Yeah. So we will find out how it all goes. But thank you for the question there, Andrew Ramsey. And we go out of Ask Bull Fam with a Thayer Kadir. A Thayer Kadir. Who asked the question? There's the rest. There it is. Judge and Chad, I have a great question, baby. I hope the coach is there is this time. Uh, let's say Chargers draft offensive line edge or cornerback and pick number five, baby. Chargers fans will say, fire the coach and the GM. These guys are stupid, LOL. My question is, if you have to go 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, baby, how angry will fans be? I think 8. Chargers fans will be angry and say, fire the coach and the GM. Kevin Coach, Wooldog, my baby. Each one, give me a number, please. Thanks. Love you, my guys. Charges country. Let's ride, baby. After the chaos that was this last week on YouTube, people say anything, and it doesn't no, make sense. So somebody's going to say, somebody's not going to like the draft and be like, we made a mistake bringing in Harbaugh. And yeah. <laughs> I just I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, they haven't played a game yet, so you right. know, you just let them do their thing. Don't get so like Trust you know. I, I I understand if you've been a fan for a long time and you've seen the Telesco drafts and they've underwhelmed and disappointed you that you're like I want do what I want, do what I want now. That's <laughs> but got to give this guy a chance. Got to give Ortiz and him a chance to build the right. roster the way we want. And the flashy picks aren't the fun ones. You know what I mean? If every every pick was a, a fun, flashy pick, it just doesn't work. You got to have the grinders. You got to have the guys that aren't the sexy picks. That's right. how we're going to get better. It's how we're going to be able to run the ball. It's how we're going to be able to do all that stuff. So, right. Yeah. So, but I, I think with the narrative of everything that's gone on, you know, everybody's saying now that there could be four quarterbacks picked in the, in, before pick five and then pick five. That's basically the number one pick of any other position. Marvin Harrison's there. 
Marvin Lee Harrison's there. there. Odunze is there. Right. They're and they there. pick an offensive lineman, an edge, or a, or a corner. cornerback. I think I, I be, think this I think the fan base will be 10. I really think that there will be a lot of tens out there. Yeah. Like fired up, pissed off, angry. Right. I'll be a zero. I'm no, yeah, I'm hundred percent. I'm going into this draft like do whatever you want. Like I want you guys to to take control and do what you think is best because yeah. I want to see us win. And I don't care. I, I don't I don't know what's best. I I I I already I know that. Like I can say that with so much positivity that I don't know what's best. So I'm just gonna trust whatever you guys are gonna do and let's get after it. And mm -hmm. I, I think that, that not everyone has to have that mindset. That's just what I'm going into it with. Yeah. I think we're just going to be the feather from Forrest Gump and just float our way down onto the Curious George book and then uh -huh. just land softly <laughs> and just go with the the Hortiz Harbaugh wins wherever they may yeah. take us this year. It's The draft is like Insane. a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yep. It's true. <laughs> Chav and always say... <laughs> <laughs> draft is like a bar. I had one. I ate drafting some. is as drafting does. <laughs> uh, stupid is as Telesco does. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bumpy ride. It already has been. I mean, <laughs> it's it's been yeah. a wild ride already. But I'm excited to see what the future holds for this team, and I hope. Everybody else will be too, um, regardless of what the pick ends up being. Whatever it ends up being, I'm on board. Let's go. Let's ride. And uh, let's let's get some dubs, man. Let's see this team. I want to see Jim Harbaugh on the sideline yelling and smacking pads and doing this to the ref going, oh, come on, throwing his hat yeah, and just in his khakis and all of his glory, just having a time. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Athir Kadir. Thank you, buddy, for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking questions and Ask Bold Fan. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat. Any final thoughts there, gentlemen? Just cannot wait to see what comes out of Hogue Performance Center tomorrow and what. Yeah. Uh, Oh, what social what media is. team is going to be on point? Megan's going to be out there ready with the phone. We believe in you, Megan. We believe we in you. Hundred percent believe team. in you. You are what we need and give what us, we we need. We need. Give we me, want. give me, give me. I need. <laughs> yeah. I need. Give me something, please. Yeah. Tell me something. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. All right, folks, don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. And yeah, love you, bye. Mm. And now, a word from our sponsors. When you're in L.A., stop by and check out the all-new Chargers Botanical Garden. Begin your journey through our flower garden where you can find Joey Begonias, Quentin Carnations, and Lily Tulipalotus. Then make your way to our forest, where you can find our collection of Khalil Maples, Justin Hemlocks, and Joshua Palms. We have big expectations for those this year. So stop by, relax under the shade of a Perryman pistachio tree, and stop and smell the Dicker Daisies. Chargers Botanical Garden, grand reopening coming this fall.